Hello YouTubers, RVers, and fellow hams. Well, today I'm going to be working on a Wi-Fi extender. Uh, I'm going to build my own because I can do it cheap. And uh, I think I can get a little more functionality than uh, some of the commercial Wi-Fi extenders. So, uh, why, first off, why do you need a Wi-Fi extender? Well, especially if you're an RVer, um, they're very useful. If you're, well, there's other situations I can think of where they might be useful. Uh, if you had an outbuilding that was a ways from your house and you needed Wi-Fi there. Um, uh, a big house, who knows? There's probably all kinds of ways that uh, you could use one. But what we need to talk about first, for the people that aren't aware of them and what they do, is what are they and what they what they do. So, a Wi-Fi extender. Um, it's kind of like a repeater. All right, it's it's going to take a, a distant Wi-Fi signal that's kind of weak, pick it up, and then reproduce it locally so that you can utilize it. One uh, possible use would be, especially with RVing, uh, if you're parked in an RV park and their access points are, are a ways away from your rig, um, or if you're traveling and you decide to overnight in a Walmart parking lot, generally you park at the very back of the lot, and that puts you a long ways from the building. And uh, I, I know from personal experience that if I take the laptop um, and I'm in a Walmart parking lot at the back of the lot, sometimes I can see Walmart free Wi-Fi in the list, but rarely can I connect. Now, there are commercial solutions uh, that are available, but they generally can be kind of expensive. The cheapest I've found is about $160, but they can be as much as four and $500 or maybe even more. If you get, uh, I think WineGuard has one with an external antenna that goes up on top of your, um, your RV, and then you run a cord in and uh, you have the internal uh, piece of the uh, system. So um, to build one, uh, we need to break down how they work, uh, what are the components of a Wi-Fi extender, and how we can duplicate that or maybe enhance it with cheaper off-the-shelf parts. And I think I can build one for around $60, um, which isn't bad. And uh, that should give me a little more functionality, actually, than the commercial units. Uh, and in this video, we're going to explore um, some block diagrams of, of how they work and then we're going to look at the individual sections and what my solution is going to be for each one and I have some of the parts already I'm still waiting on one crucial piece but we'll talk about that when we get to the diagrams so let's go over here to the uh, laptop and I'm going to show you uh, well how a Wi-Fi extender works so this is a extremely simplified diagram of uh, a Wi-Fi extender and there's generally three components to it. There can be just two. Actually, this centerpiece might not be there in some of the cheaper units. Um, but basically what it is is a wireless bridge that will connect to the remote wireless network and then an internal wireless access point that repeats the remote wireless network uh, locally for your device to connect to, your laptop or whatever. Uh, better units might also include a router and firewall to isolate your internal network from the external network, which can be important. Uh, on a public network, uh, hackers love public networks. Uh, black hat hackers, bad guys, the evil guys, you know, with the big curly mustaches that wring their hands a lot. Um, they can set up like at a hotel. They might rent a room at a hotel overnight, connect to the hotel's network, and then start scanning the network for every device that's connected to it, looking for vulnerable computers. You should always turn on the firewall in your OS, especially if you're going to be connecting to public Wi-Fi networks. The other thing you want to do is, is make sure that uh, the web pages that you're connecting to, that you're going to log into, banking or whatever, uh, look at the address bar at the top and make sure that you see HTTPS. That S means secure, and that means that all the traffic going between you and the remote server is encrypted. Looks like gobbledygook. Very important. If you have a site that you log into with a username and password that does not use HTTPS, 
complain to them because everything you send is in the clear. It's regular text. Anybody on the network sniffing traffic will be able to read your username and password in the clear. And it's it's relatively rare that that, you know, that, that happens that you have a hacker sniffing a public network, but it does happen. Uh, especially hotels, airports, uh, maybe even a Walmart. Any big public Wi-Fi network is a potential target for a hacker. And they can go out there and they can try to sniff packets. Uh, they can try to poke at your computer and look for a vulnerable one or one that has a public share and browse the documents on it. I mean, it's, it's a potential treasure trove for them. So that centerpiece, a router and firewall, on some extenders is kind of important, and I'll talk about that more uh, in a moment. But first off, let's start at the beginning, okay? So over here, we've got a wireless bridge, and this will generally have uh, an antenna um, of some type that is uh, sitting out there uh, receiving the remote wireless network, usually a higher gain antenna so it can pick up the weaker signal, or an external antenna that's on the outside of your RV um, or the outside of the building if, uh, if you're trying to extend a network to an outbuilding. And then you have a wireless bridge. Now what is a bridge? Well, this is one of the main components of an extender. And uh, what a bridge is, as we see here, is it's what it sounds like. It's a bridge for data between two different network topologies. In this case, we're taking a Wi-Fi network and we're just transferring the information, the data, directly over to a wired network that your devices could be hooked up to. Now, the very minimal, most basic Wi-Fi extender could just be a bridge. You know, you could, you could do just this one component, and as long as you had a good antenna on this side of it uh, uh, that's going to really pick up that remote network, um, it could bridge over to Ethernet cables that would hooked, uh, hook directly to your laptop or your desktop computer. And uh, your computer will think that it is on this network over here uh, direct through an Ethernet connection. The bridge just makes that transparent and all traffic going in both directions just comes right across the bridge. So that's the first component of our wireless extender. And I have a bridge that I've bought on eBay. It's an older Linksys uh, WET54G. Now you can get these for 15, 16 to 20 dollars, maybe not too much more than that. They're older, but they will connect to most all wireless networks out there, and they will do as long as they have the current firmware uh, WE. P, or WPA2 um, encryption, which is the most common password um, encryption style uh, for wireless networks, the secure networks. Uh, so that's a good cheap bridge. And what's nice about it is this connector, which I think is an RPSMA connector, uh, is well known and there's plenty of accessories that can connect to it. For example, I ordered one of these. Now this is the component I'm waiting on for my extender. It's a, uh, a Yagi antenna, a high gain antenna for Wi-Fi. They say it's 16 dBi. I think that's a bit generous, but it is certainly going to be very sensitive. So this antenna comes with a cable on it that already has an RPSMA connector um, to hook it up to that Linksys bridge. And I think this antenna was uh, somewhere around $16. Um, it's, it's ridiculously cheap. And that comes with the mounting hardware, too. So you could put it on a uh, mast of some type if you wanted to mount it externally. I plan on building the bridge uh, and its power supply and everything else into its own box that will also mount on the mast, perhaps on the opposite side of this plate. So the whole thing will be one unit uh, with just an Ethernet connection going to it. Uh, that's my plan anyway. So yeah, you can for let's say 20 bucks, you can get the antenna. For another 20 bucks, you can get the bridge. We're up to 40 bucks. And it and its most basic configuration, if you ignore this center piece, um, and you ignore this out here, right, and you just take the bridge and go directly through an Ethernet cable to a laptop, you could have a, a wireless network extension to a remote network. You could put the uh, antenna 
on a little tripod pointing out one of the windows over at the Walmart building and it's going to have so much gain that you're going to get an excellent signal. Uh, it's going to be like you're right up there at the, at the front of the building. Um, so you'll get really good uh, throughput. So that's about the most basic you could get away with there and that'd be pretty cheap. You know, but that's if you just have one laptop. Um, me, uh, I have an internal network in my RV. I have a lot of devices in here. Um, I've got a Raspberry Pi that I like to have on the network so I can remotely control it with my Chromebook, so I'd have my Chromebook on. I'd also like to have my laptop on at the same time, and potentially my server if I needed to archive some data or uh, you know, do whatever I'd need to do with my server, which is basically a, a NAS, a network address storage. You know, So I can have multiple devices. Um, somebody else might, have, might be traveling with a family. You know, and you've got your kid with his cell phone. You've got your your wife with her cell phone, maybe a tablet or an iPad, um, a laptop. Uh, you know, you could have multiple devices that you want to get on that network. And in that case, you'd need to go a little more complicated than just the bridge. And most Wi-Fi extenders are going to be built like that. They're going to have at least a bridge and an access point. And the access point is basically going to create an internal wireless network. Uh, in those simpler ones, it's just going to repeat what it sees on the outside. So the, if the bridge is connected to Walmart free Wi-Fi inside the rig, uh, this is going to be broadcasting the same data and you're going to see Walmart free Wi-Fi. But in my case, I have an extra piece here. I have a router and firewall in the middle. And what I'm using for that is a Linksys um, WRT54G, which is one of the most common wireless access points. And there is public f uh, firmware for it that gives it all kinds of more capabilities. So you can use multiple um, units and create mesh networks and do all kinds of crazy stuff with them. But in my case, I'm just using it to do these two pieces here, the router and firewall and the access point. Uh, this is what you would use to connect to your internet provider at home um, and it has four Ethernet cable uh, ports on the back of it for hooking up devices directly and it creates with these antenna it creates an internal wireless network with a different name or with whatever name you choose right so this is a really common piece of hardware uh, I'm going to use this and I already have one here in the rig uh, on the downstream side of the bridge. So the wireless bridge will connect out here to Walmart or whatever and bring the signal in to the Linksys and then the Linksys will provide me with security because it's it's designed to be an internet router. It's designed to be connected to the internet where you're gonna have hackers from all over the world scanning your IP address looking for a way in. So it's got some security. It's got a beefy firewall uh, it's you know going to keep you safe and then it's going to create an internal private network inside your rig that you could connect all your devices to and they could see each other too that's key in my case uh, in my case my uh, my Chromebook can see the Raspberry Pi and remotely control its screen so I can sit outside with my Chromebook controlling my radios which are hooked up to the Raspberry Pi which I've done on a few occasions sat outside in the nice weather uh, making contacts in digital modes over the radios inside the rig. It's it's fun, you know. So a lot more flexibility by going that route. So that is basically my plan for my Wi-Fi extender. I'm waiting on the antenna. It hasn't arrived yet. Once I get the antenna, I'll put it all together, and that'll be the next video. We'll uh, we'll put the whole thing together. We'll talk about how you configure the bridge to connect to a a, a wireless network. We'll talk about how you can configure the router to create your internal network. And I'll show you how I'm powering everything off the solar um, and uh, simplified uh, building it all together so that the, the uh, bridge end will all be one unit. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be kind of fun. So that's going to be my Wi-Fi extender. I've got most of the parts just waiting on the antenna. I have tested uh, the bridge. Um, I had the bridge sitting over in the window in the bedroom and it got a much better signal there than the laptop got inside the rig and I brought its Ethernet cable back to my uh, Linksys router I had my Raspberry Pi on I was controlling that 
for the radios. I was watching YouTube videos on the laptop and the throughput was much, much better than just trying to use the laptop here in the rig. So I know it's going to work really, really well when I get that high gain antenna and put the whole thing together. So there you go. That is a primer on uh, what a wireless extender is, how it works, and how I'm going to build one on the cheap. And I think total cost is going to be somewhere around 60 bucks, maybe a little less. The uh, bridge and the, um, the uh, uh, Linksys router can be had off eBay pretty cheap. I see them often. Uh, the only thing you have to do is upgrade the firmware on the bridge probably because it needs to be on 2.07. And when we go in the uh, other video for configuration and how we're, we're going to set it up, um, I'll provide a link to that firmware. It took me a while to find it, but I do have it, and I'm going to provide it to an archive, an online archive of Linksys firmware so that if you need it, you'll be able to download it and upgrade your unit as well. So there you go. Um, in part two, we'll put it all together and uh, we'll test it out and show you how well it works. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.